awesome though. All right. All right. It looks like we're live. All right. TJ is going to go handle some freight or something. I don't know. It's like logistics doesn't stop for our show, but whatever. Uh, today we have the wonderful Miss Shay Lynn Dixon. Hey. Shay, Thanks. why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Because, I mean, everybody knows you, but everybody needs to know you from who you say you are. Right, of course. So my name is Shaylin Dixon. I'm the co-founder and CEO at Scale Logistics. We're a premier third-party logistics company. We specialize in supporting MRO facilities with their aerospace logistics needs. We've actually kind of grown a little bit in the last six months. I just haven't updated any of our branding. But uh, we've been working with a lot of general contractors and just providing support uh, for real estate development projects here in Georgia. So it's been really exciting just to kind of carve out our niche and our pathway. And uh, thanks for having me on the show. I appreciate it. Thanks for always being reliable. You've been like, uh, you've been around forever in in my circle anyways. I've been following you since, I, I, I don't know, like the beginning of time, I think. <laughs> <laughs> me on LinkedIn, I think. Right. And, uh You've always been awesome follow. And if you guys aren't following Shay, make sure that you do her and her company. Um, she's premier for real. Like it is not just uh, talk. She knows her stuff. And that's why she's handling aerospace, that's which right. has got to be a unique yeah, niche. Tell me about the uniqueness of aerospace versus like produce or general Food. trade or whatever. <laughs> <Food>. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, I, I don't. I, I didn't come from an aerospace background. So I always tell people when you're really interested in something, if you um, pick a niche when you're starting, especially if you're a new agent or building your book of business, and you kind of really delve into it, you can carve your pathway. And that's what I did with aerospace. I'll tell you, it was a learning curve. Um, I really immersed oh, I myself. Bet. I took a lot of training classes. I wanted to learn about the complexities of airplanes. I just liked airplanes. So when I first started, I was like, ooh, I'm going to do air cargo. I'm going to be importing and exporting air cargo. Once I started doing it, I was like, hmm, this is not really for me. Um, but because I already started learning about airplanes and learning about aerospace, aerospace, I started researching companies that were local to us and making sure that I kind of knew the full life cycle of an airplane. Uh, and once I like understood the life cycle of an airplane, understood all of the different component parts and things that go into it, I was able to identify an area that I felt like there was maybe lacking uh, logistics or where logistics, I could provide logistics services that would support the MRO facilities so that they could outsource it and kind of just focus on fixing the parts. Um, and it worked for me. And I just, I, I focused on that. So people are always like, do you, you know, do you have to have a niche? I'm like, yes, you have to have a niche. When I talked to the first thing I talked to like mentees or new agents and they're like, I do, I said, what type of freight do you move? Right. And they're like everything, all types everywhere i said in every state i'm like wow you you're just you must have been moving freight for 20 30 years because there's no way you can become a master <laughs> of the market like that there's it's, there's just not so i found my niche and it was aerospace that's awesome i am a huge um uh well flight aviation military aviation nerd i actually had every intention in my mind to go into the Naval Academy right out of high school. I graduated when I was 17. I had a letter from our then Senator um, to get into the Naval Academy. They're only allowed to recommend like so many people a year. And I had that, but it was at the wrong time. And I, apparently God had a different plan for my life and took me through a whole different direction because here I am not <laughs> right. anything to do with aviation, but uh, I have studied airplanes my entire life, uh, mostly military and uh, like the James, books on airplanes i had all of those i have a whole library of that stuff i know like uh rolls royce has a factory that makes jet engines here in indiana i am not too far from you i'm about 700 miles north awesome which is not bad but um i i have always been a huge 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 aviation nerd i was at uh top gun when it first came out and i was <laughs> at the, i was at the new one when it first came out because right that that's my niche right there i i wanted to be in that so badly and uh, fillings in my teeth and a broken shoulder and some other life events kept me out of that path. Um, but I'm, I'm really cool that it, it's really cool that you are able to still be in something like that. And so what you do just simply fascinates me. And I'm always, always 
I stop and I'm like, oh, that's so cool. I wish I could just sit down and hang out with you and just talk about stuff for a little while. Cause mm-hmm. like even cargo planes blow my mind. I, I just, I love it. I love cargo planes. And honestly, I don't do much import and export. And if I do, I kind of, we have a company um, that we partner with and they handle most of those for our clients just so that I can compete at a higher level. But I'll tell you, when people get into this industry, you have to be passionate, whatever you're doing, you have to be passionate about it. Because at some point, um, just like right now, we're in a down, down cycle on our way back up, right? But this is not, this is common. This happens over and over again in the, this uh, supply chain life cycle. And people, you know, because they're not passionate about it, it kind of falls off. So because I was passionate, I was able to like restart, you know, we had a legion and we restarted our freight brokerage. And I'll be honest with you, because I was passionate, I was really able to make sure that I could constantly keep my like fingers and pulse on the aerospace industry and what's going on in the market and, and where I can find carve out my little small premier logistics company, you know, where I can get my little piece of the pie. So I've been able so, to do that. Question here. Yeah. Um, are you moving stuff via truck that is aerospace parts or are you moving stuff via airplane? No. Everything I'm moving is ground transportation. We do handle some um, imports or exports, uh, supporting Savannah, sometimes Mobile, sometimes we'll do um, Charleston, but the like 90% of what we do is all on hot shots and flatbeds. And it's going to be to support expedited moves. So it's going to be anything that's like an AOG, which is when an airplane is on the ground, there's a part that's in the plane that needs to be fixed or it needs to be replaced because there's some type of corrosion. It could be anything. Um, And they need it there like almost immediately. And so I'm getting team drivers, making sure that it's expedited. We're picking it up and delivering the part, um, whether we're getting it from a teardown or whether we're getting it from an MRO facility that's just repaired it. That is So. so cool. That's what I want. So I've heard tons about your uh, stuff and I haven't had a chance to sit down and like just literally grill you. I know this isn't what TJ's plan for this was, but I'm hijacking it because I'm He'll be okay. Good. He'll be okay. He'll still come on uh, and be like, okay, hold on. Let me go back and look at these questions. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. We're just talking right now. So yeah. no, you're I right. love the. Uh, so do you have to like, do you hit anybody up? Like I'm the guy, they always ask me, hey, huh, what what works? What do I do? Do you have to hit anybody up for this? Because it sounds like you're probably more in demand then like you're not like general freight so people are going to call you right instead of you yeah knocking on doors yeah people knock on my door all the time and um i'm like 50 50 so <laughs> right i know they do <laughs> people are relentless and they don't understand that like i have to know you and like you and trust you before i'm even going to do business with you even when Absolutely. it comes to a carrier my reputation's on the line. Every load, my customer, they don't care if I'm if I didn't touch the load, I'm responsible for it. Amen. So how I move is way different. And also because I move a certain way and because everyone knows my expectation, I only work with other companies that are like that. So I probably have about four thousand carriers in my network. Of that four thousand, we probably use about a hundred on average for the year. And of those hundred, maybe two came from DAT. So we, our model is very different. I'm a, my husband was in trucking for almost 15 years. And so a lot of the people we know are relationships we build or people that we've met along the way at church or at different events. So our relationships are different because it's like, if you don't answer the phone, John, I'm calling your wife. And now you're going to have to answer the phone (laughs) because your wife is like, what's going on? Where are you? Why haven't you dropped? Right? So the, the relationship is um, different. I also focus on the small carriers. So two to five trucks is like perfect for me. Um, And we kind of all band together and, you know, I, I can compete at a higher level with the other carriers because my carriers will deadhead for me. My carriers know I'm going to always make sure I pay them well. Like, there's never a question of, are they going to get detention? It's like, am I going to pay for detention or is the customer, right? Like, these things are no-brainers, but they also know as soon as you're picking up, I want video, I want footage, I want to make sure it's strapped right. I want to make sure before you leave, all the paperwork is signed. Send me the paperwork. Like, I require a lot from them, so I try to give them a lot, too. You you know what? I, I, as a shipper... I, I was talking to somebody about this today. It might have been TJ earlier. I was talking to him on the phone, but 
it is not that difficult to follow simple directions and the simple directions that you're asking for in this day and age with smartphones and the, the, the ability to live chat video conference or move a document electronically, you're not asking for anything that doesn't take more than like 30 seconds of time, right? You're exactly. not asking for uh, like a blood sample and the rights to your firstborn son. <laughs> right. We're, we're right. asking for stuff that you can do. Like if you go out and take a picture of your of your dinner and put it on Instagram, you're you're doing the same thing that you that we're asking you to do for the. I ask for uh, uh, proactive ETAs from carriers. Again, it, I love what you said. This is so. I'm jumping all over the place here because this is hitting home. Um, when I ask for a, a carrier, when I explain to them that we want you to win, they're like, "What do you mean you want us to win? You want us to make a ton of money? Well, yeah, I want you to be successful and win because." When you deliver to my customer, it's me. It's my butt that's on the line. I'm the one answering to sales. Sales is making that promise, and it's my job to fulfill it. If that load doesn't show up or if it's a day late because your truck dropped off and you couldn't recover it, it's not you that failed. Ultimately, it's, it, it's me. I failed, and then our sales team and the management are asking me why I couldn't come through for them mm. or our customer that keeps us open. They don't care that. Um, Bob's country uh, brokerage service had bills, <laughs> right? Bills, bills, heavy haul that found a better load and got paid and ditched him. But all they know is Tony didn't come through. So when I pair up with somebody and when I use somebody, you, you said your list was what 4,000? Yeah, I have about 4,000. Yep, we have about 60. Oh, wow! And honestly, I probably use about 10. Yeah. If that, yeah. and the reason is because I want to know them. I want to know that when I call, they answer. I want them to follow the directions that I give them. I want that proactive ETA. I don't want to have to come in in the morning and ask you when your truck's going to be here. I want to know that it's already on the way and that you've updated me when I come into work. I want to know that that guy will show up right at lunchtime because that's what they always do. <laughs> and I want to know that when I load him through lunch, that that means something to them, right? Because I don't care. I mean, I don't, I don't mind moving lunch around, but sometimes I have plans. But I want to know that the guy's on pace to deliver. I don't. I don't care if something happens along the way. Tell me what you did to take care of it, and I'll you know I'll give you a pat on the back or whatever. But I had a guy offer me. Um, it was just a simple miscommunication the other day. Asked us how late we would be there, and you know our 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 hours are till two thirty. And I told him, you know, I'll stick around. I'll be here till three. No problem. And my assumption was that they were trying to come in at the latest time at three. So then this truck shows up at like nine 30 and it's from them. And I'm like, wait a minute, we weren't expecting, you know, we weren't quite ready. We had a couple other trucks in the dock and it just, the way timing happened, he was like the fourth one to be loaded. So we get them in there and we get them done. Well, they wanted, it, it ended up taking like three hours right on the dot because there was a lunch in there too. And, uh, and a meeting and, we got him loaded and got him going as soon as we could, but literally he was the fourth truck in the row. We get him done and the, the carrier, the, the broker asked for detention for the driver. And I said, listen, cut out. I cut out again, didn't I? Stupid. Yeah. Man. But anyway, That's okay. We, but I was we, still like, okay, I, I was following. <laughs> I wanted to pay him anyways, because as long as it's a hundred percent pass through, I don't, I mean, the broker doesn't need a piece of detention because that's the driver just waiting. And Correct. I always, I, I don't have any problem with that. If there was a reason, if it was legit. So we paid him and he, uh, he, you know, told me, yeah, it's going to be a hundred percent pass through. So I gave him the money that we agreed on. And uh, I wanted to make him happy because I wanted to be able to use him again or whatever. But right. again, it wasn't his problem. It wasn't his fault. It wasn't our fault, but it just, it is what it is. So that we want to make sure the guy was happy and whole and sent him on his way. But man, what it comes down to is just what you're saying. When you trust and have a good relationship with those people and they know that, that you're going to take care of them, they're going to turn around and take care of you. And that makes a huge difference. A huge difference. But I think also too, um, a lot of brokers, especially newer brokers are skipping that part in their systems and process. They get so excited to get a new customer and then they kind of like skip the 
due diligence, that risk mitigation, they kind of just skip that, right? They they bring on a carrier, they're like, I've got somebody, they, they're worried about moving it. But I think sometimes there's a slowing down in that process. I mean, for us, because we have high value cargo, people reach out all the time. They're like, hey, you guys have good rates. Uh, you know, we want to do business with you. We want to work with you. And I'm like, okay, cool. You know, and I'm like checking them out on social media. I'm looking up the owners of the company and I'm like, yeah, definitely not. Because of the things that you say, the things that how you talk in some of the group chats, like people don't realize people look at that. And uh, I don't trust yeah. you to handle my freight with care. You know, I, I just don't. Right. You're talking about holding freight hostage, <laughs> stuff like that. I'm searching. I'm doing my due diligence and my team is as well before anyone takes our freight. Um, and we really make sure that we do what we can to like be get ahead of anything. That proactiveness most people don't know how to do that because they're working in the business too, right? So they're and everybody's they're, reactive in this business. Most certainly reactive, um, but when you start being a little bit proactive, even when you have expedited freight, you can be proactive. Absolutely, um, like picking a carrier pool that's going to be, you know, uh, kind of the same level of excellence as your business. Making sure that your carriers really are clear on like those expectations. That's me. And I make them sign off on it. That when you sign up, I want you to understand this is my expectation. So there's never uh, any issues. I have a high standard also when they're actually on site with the customers, the way that they communicate with the customers, the way they communicate challenges. If there's um, we've had a lot of carriers that, you know, they get beside themselves. They're frustrated. They're whatever, especially with flatbed freight. Um tarping sometimes they need tarps they told them you know they didn't these are simple misunderstandings that if a driver does not handle properly can get your business cut immediately oh, so yeah. i let them know you're representing me i want you to talk like you're talking to a church mother i want you to lower your voice i need you need to ask questions you need to be patient you need to wait if you can't get a hold of somebody call me i'll get a hold of someone but there's always a diplomatic way to do things um and uh like you're those outbursts or being angry or that that's an immediate, you could be a little bit late for me um, once or twice. Um, I, I try to give people the benefit of the doubt, especially if people get ahead of it and I can get ahead of it, but the unprofessional behavior that's immediately grounds you're out of there. My customers just don't have yeah. time for it. They and nobody don't. does. And especially with expedited freight, that's high, high pressure, high consequences. <laughs> You've yes. got to have that calm level head, you know, I, I was always told as a good leader, you have to be the chaos in somebody else's storm. And and I I I, I think about that every time I want to react now in situations. You know, I'll have a, a team member who something came up, there was a misunderstanding, whatever, and and they're they're upset. You know, my my job is to be calm and say, hey, let's work through this. We're all grown ups here. Let's talk about it and let's figure out where the miscommunication happened, and see if we can't fix it. And you can't always come out ahead on top on that, you know, because sometimes people just decide that they want to be upset. But if you can coach them into reacting more logically and less emotionally in a situation that's poking at emotion, mm -hmm. it is so much more um, uh, emotionally mature and professional. And then you, you take out all, all of the, the baggage and then it becomes a transaction then you realize that they're just trying to get what they really wanted anyways, and you can help them. And then you can, you can literally make a, a good relationship better out of a conflict instead of going the other way because you chose to react emotionally. Most, most certainly. I, uh, we don't experience a lot of conflict with our freight just because when you go into any type of secure facility, it's just like the military when you're going to the airport. Um, like you can't have anyone with you. You can't even have a dog with you unless they're like a service dog, no large bags. Like they're yep. just really particular. Um, if you have a warrant, you will go to jail. Um, they'll take your ID and you will go to jail. Um, <laughs> so I always tell people, I'm like, have you ever been in trouble? We're running background checks at this point because I mean, I just don't want anyone to go to jail. Just know, right. like, don't have a warrant. Um, this is not the type of freight you want to haul. And um, you know, they're very strict. Um, but when you're going in to pick up any type of aerospace spray, especially from an airport hangar where it's being repaired or stored or it came in air cargo, um, that it's completely different because there's no weight. There's normally you're the only carrier. 
Um, besides the freight not being crated and ready when you're there, like you don't even know what it is. Honestly, we don't know what the government is moving sometimes in the crates. They just say, pick up these crates yeah. and move on. Honestly, yep. um, especially if you have to have an escort, then you're like, hmm, I wonder what's it could, in it here. It could be but, live ammo. I mean, <laughs> you never yeah. know. You never know. So, and all, most of our freight is pick and run too. So um, there's like, no, don't stop, don't pass go team drive or making sure that you're parking in a secure facility. Like we're very uh, particular when it comes to, uh, you know, and I'm like, I have eyes on it at all times. Uh, and my customers have access to that as well. So we move a little bit differently. I'll say most of my friends that are brokers and people that I talk to for every 10 loads that they move, I move about one load. Right. Uh, and, and that's okay because that one load, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, able to really follow it, be able to offer this tailored service, be able to, you know, when you have a $750,000 part, it's a little bit different, you know. But it's they white gloves. Know. Yeah. Versus definitely. general FAK. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Totally, they, totally different. Yeah, they have high standards, honestly. Like, yeah, they do. When but I was at we the rise to the occasion. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. I know a little bit about that. When I was at the steel company, we sold some steel to uh, Smith and Wesson out in mm. um, New England. And it was just for making handcuffs because they make the handcuffs that, that the military and police use. Um, one of many manufacturers, but you know, they make guns as well, but getting a broker driver into that facility, like they had to pass a background check. We had to do all of this stuff beforehand before we could even tender them the load. Um, you know, we're talking like a coil of steel. Like it's not, it's nothing yet. It's a hunk of steel. You know? <laughs> and, it doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> it's they had to have, Right. And they had to have security ride with them in their truck. You couldn't have dogs, you can have all this stuff you couldn't, couldn't do and couldn't do. And they had to have this background check and these, it was crazy. And I, and, and that was just to a manufacturing facility that was a contractor and it wasn't even like an actual post nine 11 airport or a military. I've delivered to military bases post 9-11 and oh my gosh, the inspection that you go through, you know, when they had those it's concrete nice. blocks set up to, to used to be, you know, a highway going in and a checkpoint. And, but now it's like, you know, there's a zigzag and you got to go through the gauntlet and the dogs and the mirrors and totally different. Now it freaked me out the first time I did that. And we were literally just building, we were bringing them their uh, little modular buildings for guard checks. And they were, they were like, um, this is for you guys. You can just leave it here at the gate as far as I'm concerned. Right, I'll turn right. around. Please let us go. Yeah. Go. But it was crazy when they're standing there with, you know, they're like this, you know, with live ammos and dogs. And you're like, uh, he, he's asking, do you have any secret compartments or any weapons? I'm like, I have tools. No. I'm, I'm not MacGyver, <laughs> but I, I mean, you could probably use them for a weapon if you wanted to. I'm not going to. I'll just stand over here. Right. <laughs> it's, had it's very intimidating. That, you know, like. I, you know, I've had drivers that just have had crazy, like they're like, they left their spouse on the side of the road. Like they wouldn't let no one in the, in, in the, in the truck with you, everything. Did you get the load moved, TJ? Did you get the load moved? You're out, you're muted. Hey, but not only that, but then I had, I had to work from home today. Uh, Cause instead of sending to the office, I have like, what is it? Six laptops that I had to sign for. Been waiting for the dude all day. He waits right till the podcast. Right when I get done getting this load. <laughs> but yeah, we got it done, got it moved. Um, first load for this Custy. And um, I think he likes me. That's always the oh. best load, though. The first load's always the best. Yeah, I always take the first one, too. Yeah. I always take it. Um, yep. I'll go up there. I'm big on it, too. I'll go up there. I'm going to go look at the yard. Um, it's kind of a specialized type thing. Um, and see what's see what's going on up there. Talk to some of the guys, the shippers, see how they're uh, you know the guys in the dock, see how they like to load it or what they're doing. Um, you have a good idea of what's going on next time, and then you can explain it. And yeah, that makes good sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's what I told him. I said, you know, I, I said, hey, let's let's look at this realistically. You know, from a business standpoint, um, you know, it's kind of weird not being in the office, but I don't sit down. I walk around literally on the phone the whole time I'm here. Um, mm -hmm. But it's <laughs> like. It, it, it's it's you know you just you explain to them like hey listen you know I I, I bid this fairly fairly high, um, however do have a driver that used to run for me for four that's going to get this done for you, um, and I'm only going to put you know good drivers on it that I know well at the beginning that way they can relate to me what's going on, and they get first dibs at it. But 
Um, you know, my goal as a, as a provider is honestly to drive my rates down. I want to stay with you. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to have to go through the ups and downs. And that all comes down to finding the right drivers, having the right information. You know, what's on the rate count? What do they know how to do? Do they know how to do this? Are we sending in the right people? Because even if your rates are good, you send in and you mess something up because you got a guy that comes in and they won't fit. Yeah, we just talked about that. Out of there. Out of there. <laughs> You better know your dins. They better know to have straps. They better have all that stuff. And so I told him that. I said, I said, yeah, this this one I bid a little bit high. He's like, no, I trust you. I said, um, you know, we're bringing it down. But I, you know, I said this is a good lane for us. You know, and then and then you can start talking about get, maybe getting rates on file and just have them tender over instead of spotting them. But um, I love it. I love having those conversations. Um, this guy that used to work with Tony back in the D. Uh, That's the best when it's people like from back in the day, and you're able to link up later. You're like. Yes, my husband gets opportunities like that all the time, and he'll be like, "Yeah, I did something yeah. for this guy back in the day," and then he reached out. I'm like, "Yes." He's yeah. working with you now, isn't he? <laughs> you what? He's working with you now, isn't he? Yeah, he actually came off the truck last year, and uh, now he like, so. handles the ops side. Nice. I mostly do like I, business I, development. He's the guy like when you see him. Like I saw that picture. I like want to meet him. Cause like yeah, absolutely, he's like he's like. There's that picture like like well, co-founder of this business like Shay standing back there again, looking all pretty, all done, <laughs> up, everything with a big smile, and he's just sitting there like I'm a bum. Like, <laughs> like, what? like I if you guys follow me on Instagram, I, it's like way better because you know it's not our professional site. But I tell yeah, people yeah. all the time, yeah, he's he's the like he's literally the biggest boss, and he just he's very. Um, solid and you know sturdy like he's yep. one of those old school drivers because he drove so long yep. he just knows the industry is cool with everybody i can be arguing with the driver and be like hey no blah blah blah, blah. and he'll get on the phone hey man that's not what we're doing <laughs> <laughs> and i, I like, love hey, it on one second <laughs> the account manager wants to talk to you <laughs> yeah yeah he seemed me he seemed like he was like just kind of chill like hey listen this is you know not too yeah. up not too down and again that's a steady head and i I mean, it's funny, you know, I learn all the, oh, every day. That's why me and Tony talk about how I would do the podcast. But, you know, I look at, you know, when I really, it came with confidence. I think once I had the confidence, I, you know, I think confidence in anything it keeps you away from arguing. I mean, the wisest man in the room or the wisest person in the room doesn't really have to say much because, you know, they already know. And it's like, you know, I tell the kids this that I coach too. It's like, you know, you, you look at somebody like a Peyton Manning, you know mm -hmm. what I mean, who has got a forehead the size of Eastern Texas. Uh, with no athletic ability, but he was great. You know, like Tom Brady, those guys are like, they're just, uh, you know, Steph Curry, I mean, Michael mm -hmm. Jordan, all those guys, like they're not too up, they're not too down. They act like they've been there before when they win. And when yep. they lose, they're moving on, they're looking for something else. And it's like that steady mindset is what's going to, is, is what's going to give you a, a longevity in your career too. I just talked about Which, this. In logistics, I'm sorry, but longevity leads to success. I mean, like you, you, you keep with it and you stay with it. It's like a cross country. It's people start falling off, man. But like you keep going, you'll be all right. But it's got to take that because if not, you'll drive yourself crazy. Uh, he seems like that. And plus, you take somebody out of the uh, out of the truck, you know, yeah. where they're dealing with, you know, assholes on the road and shippers yeah. that are being asked, all that stuff. And then all of a sudden you get them off and they're like, man, this, I, can, I can succeed here. Like, right. I don't want shit. Like, I can do this. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's stressful, but it's not stressful. Plus, dealing with, you know, all the other shit I used to have to deal and with. And the physical toll, because that's it got to the point where he's like, you know, just getting in and out the truck, everything. Yep. Like, it takes a toll on you. And honestly, I love that um, I don't have patience to talk to the drivers all the time, if I'm honest, um, especially when they're in the trucks, you know, like he knows all the guys, all their kids, you know, they, you know, when his drivers are tired, he's like, you know, I have a driver that's pushing in, he's, t you know, tired, whatever. he's talking to the driver, you know, they have like a, a, a relationship. And Tony, you were talking about before, like you have like your 10 carriers that you know and that you use, our carriers that we know we use. It's like that because he has like a strong relationship with them. I focus on the customer relationship. He's definitely all he's going to advocate for the carrier every time. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what? I'm like, hey, it's like it's a perfect so, mix, too. That's a really great is. balance, too, especially if especially if you can. Re I don't know. Th th those sometimes are the best conversations you can have with shippers. And I think, yeah. you know, I was never a driver, but, you know, being on the asset side for a long time and running the, and running the fleet and everything, you know, I have those conversations where it's like, Listen, I know what it's like, man. Like, you need if you want capacity, if you want rates, you know, you could you could come out and, and please your boss for a couple months here, right? But but market turns, you're gonna be have a tail between your legs again, right? I mean, like, you want capacity. Anybody could pull trucks from somewhere, right? But 
I'm sorry, but drivers either want to run it or they don't. And they'll tell you their truck's not even available, you know, if, if or it's going to cost this much to go do it if they don't want to do it. But you find somebody that lives in the lane, lives at the origin destination, uh, you know, gets through the, you know, makes the wife happy. You know, I'm, I'm sorry. That's a big thing with drivers, man. Yeah. Like, you know, wife's happy. You know, I get through the house. You know, at certain, you know, I, you know, I promised her this when I said I become a driver. You know, I promised, you know, those are big things, man. And like, it, it, number one, I like that because it just shows integrity. It just shows like the guy's mm-hmm. probably a good dude. But number two, it's like this dude will do whatever it takes to stay on that lane, man. Like he'll take a little bit less rate. You know what I mean? Like he'll 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 bring the, the I've got guys bring the shippers, you know, breakfast in the morning, be able to get loaded first. You know, Burger King, you know, some likes right. what. You know what I mean? Like there's ways to do it. And, and that's committed capacity. That's not just capacity. That's like these dudes are going to stick with you. And this is how you get those you know, those, those, uh, you know, customers out in Iowa who's had the same carrier that's hauled from for 30 years and their terminals right next to it. And they go eat T-bone dinners together and shit like that. That's a whole different world. And I, I remember, I heard you mention it earlier when I was putting that VOL together, but, uh, you know, the, these, these people that come in and they don't treat it, that they, they don't have a, a niche. They don't have, they just, you know, whatever it is, it's, it's out it, here winging it. It takes time. Yeah. It takes time to do that. And telling a young person, Hey, you know, if you really just take your time here and, and like, you know, but you're surrounded by people that are out here making margin on all this shit, just covering loads on DAT, whatever. But like, if you take your time, you could set yourself up, man, for like, like big success. The I mean, future. yeah, yes, really yeah. good money. I'll tell you, like most people that I consult with or that are new in the industry and they'll reach out and they'll be like, Hey, you know, can we talk? And I'll be like, sure. They will. They, I tell them immediately. I said, look, it's going to take you six to nine months realistically to get your first customer and you might get your first customer you might not actually move the load your first mm-hmm. shot or opportunity and they're immediately like that's a long time i'm like well maybe you should be a dispatcher this might not be for you yeah. right because i'm closing deals now from like relationships i established years ago you know years ago i've been steady working and not being weird like can we get past the point where we're like salesy with people, like get to know people. This is a huge thing for them and you, you know, take your time. It takes time to build your book of business and you have to focus on the niche, the region and the equipment type. Like, I can't stress that enough. They all are important. Like, yes, you can have a niche, but after you pick your niche, (coughs) excuse me, you need to pick a region, preferably the region that you're in and that you know, and that you can be a part of. And then you need to figure out which equipment type. Because I get people all the time, they're like, oh, yeah, I'm moving freight in Georgia. I'm moving uh, flatbed. I, we pull containers and we do reefer. I'm like, oh, wow. How many customers do you have? None. Because you can't focus on serving each one of those markets. You just can't. You really can't. Yeah. And it, it does make a big difference because it's it's it takes patience. It takes time. But you can build from that. Like People don't see that like that. Like they're always sales, 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 new customers, new customers. Let's go ring a gong. Well, you could do that all you want. But like. If you don't have somebody who knows what they're doing and is going to like really, really service it, it's just going to be low hanging fruit, man. I've been in it. We've done, done it, man. I've been around. We've been landing customers right and left and none of it got worked because right. that's all we were caring about. Was we, we've customers. been saying this for three years. Yeah. We've been saying so, this for so, three years. People keep, I still get the emails every single day, five to 10 of them about how they specialize in OTR, parcel, ocean, air, Reaper, <laughs> tanker, flatbed. I get them too. And, and, guess, and guess what? And guess what? You know, in at, anything. at the end of the day, a reaper makes a big difference, but she's right on the stand, uh, standpoint of like commodity and, and equipment are, are even bigger. Because what you can do then is as you grow and new opportunities come, you can say, hey, listen, man, I've really been doing well. You know, um, you know, instead of running, uh, you know, the uh, you know, flatbed with ramps, I've been, you know, rocking some step decks or whatever, whatever it is. Like I, that's been my thing in Georgia, you know, for this long. I know you got a project you're just talking about out of Louisiana, um, you know, and you have that like real conversation with them. Like, I'd love to maybe, you know, let's let's look at what loads you have and let's I'd love to maybe build another team around it. Maybe build, you know, bring somebody in and train them on what's going on and have them then be that. And I've done that with a pod where it's like, hey, this 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 guy here, there's a carrier rep that literally is in charge of the Louisiana area, you know, with stuff out of Port Island and, and Baton Rouge and stuff. I'm like, that's his carrier base. You know what I mean? Like, and then uh, a girl who was great, one of the best carriers I've ever been around. She was, she, you know, say she was in, in Tennessee, you know, she had that whole Tennessee, Kentucky area nailed down. Right. And like, that's how you can build out because now you're saying it's like, yes, I'm managing the, I know the ins and outs of the freight or whatever, but when it comes right. to carriers having that region and knowing who's where and what's going on and the weather and you're on top of things and like, you're not, you're not expanding so far. That's like, 
oh shit, uh, man, I was just running so many loads in Ohio that I forgot you still need chains out in Denver or whatever. You know what I mean? Like there's a whole different, you know, that's how you lose money. I mean, it's just how you lose money. I mean, like, ah, I forgot there was a holiday. Oh, I forgot there was this and that. Like, boom, $500 loss. You yeah. know what I mean? And it's just one of those things that like, if you don't, if you're not on top of it, you can't grow out uh, because you're just putting 10% into every lane rather than 100% into one. That's right. And a lot of uh, newer brokers, they focus on just add, like, you know, once they do start getting success, they just want to add on more agents, add on more people. And I started that business model because I saw everyone else doing it. Everyone, all my coaches and all the, the logistics gurus, you have to build a team. And, you know, all these people are like, hey, we want to come and move high value cargo. And then I started bringing people on. And I was like, this is a headache. I could just go and get my own freight and build a team around me. So I actually changed our business model to I have a sales team that supports me and I have an operation team that supports my husband. And we kind of built the business around us. And um, I kind of like took a step back. And instead of focusing on investing in people, I focused on investing in tech. And when I did that, it kind of changed the game. I make twice as much money with twice, like half the amount of salary. So for me, that was worth it. Totally. Yeah. Efficiency in motion. That's what yeah. I talk about. You know what I mean? Always be looking to adapt and change. And, and this is why you see women. This is why you see, you know, minorities. This is why you see people excelling because it's not the, this old school brother, you know, like me and me and, you know, Bob and Roger, you know, that have been doing the same thing for 45 years. And when you tell them anything different, they're like, nah, nah, nah. If you get here right. at 5 a.m., you know, three hours before we open and read the paper and drink coffee, you'd be successful. I'm like, that, you know, yeah. what I mean? like, that's not what it's about anymore, man. Like, it's, it's not what it is. Like, you either come up with something and adapt as you go and get efficient, or you're just going to, I mean, they're, they're selling. I mean, they're sitting on the beach and, and you know, <laughs> Manitoba, <laughs> Canada. But, you know, it, it is what it is. I mean, that's the only connections they got left because Canadians yeah. love everybody. Yeah. So, um, but no, I mean, like, that's, what you, that's what you got to do is look, hey, like, hey, where can I, and as a business owner, it's tough to, in a small business, it's a little bit easier, but as you grow, it's tough to like kind of trickle that down and say, hey, you know, this is where really my thoughts are. And I always try to preach that because I've always been right side by side with the owners in every company I've been in. And it, even, you know, a circle when we really grew, it was like, I'm trying to explain it like, hey, sometimes if you could get the mindset of what the company needs and what the company is doing, it's going to make you more successful in the long run too, just because like, you could set yourself up for success. Like this is the direction we got to go. And this is why we're doing what we're doing. Um, you know what I mean? Like if you don't know, you'll probably bitch about it. But if you do know, you'll probably get on board with it. That's right. That's right. So I like that a lot. I mean, but it's, it's all about, it's all about having that, that, um, you know, I wanted to bring this up today because I thought, you know, when it comes to having like, you know, a, a niche or whatever, like you can be really good at a lot of things. You know, I look at it, you know, I've done a lot of things. I've done everything there is to do really good. And not, not by, on purpose, I just got thrown into it, right? Right. But I can't sell myself that way. That I, I can't, I can't hang my hat on that because it, it doesn't give me, you know, the ability, like I just said, to have a hundred percent in one lane and, and and really develop from there. And, I, and that Deion Sanders interview, I heard, I love the dude. I remember my my wall, my wall when I was growing up was pretty much all uh, Jordan and Bulls, you okay. know, basically. Like you know, ever had posters? Now you don't need posters. Anymore. I don't even kids have posters. Anymore. No, but they you don't. See the paint. That's you couldn't see the paint on my walls. It was all Jordan, right? And then all of a sudden they started to kind of disappear. And here's Dion, you yeah. know what I mean, coming up there because he came in um, and changed the game. But it was like he his 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 thing was like you know he used to play offense and defense, you know, and he was playing he was playing offense because he got bored because nobody was throwing the ball to him. And he knew he was good, so he was going to go play offense. And then he's like, and then I hit a, a, a you know a certain thing in my mind where I was like, you know, and then I started playing baseball. Right. And then, and then they always excel at that. It's like, I could either be good at, you know, a bunch of different things, or I could be the best at one. And he's like, yeah, I'm bored at deep defensive back, but like, what can I do to, you know, get around that? Like, just because they're not throwing my way, what can I do? What, how, how can I maybe, you know, bait some coverages, maybe do some whatever. Like he's like, and that's where my IQ in the game went up. And he's like, when my IQ went up, my, not only did my skills get better and I didn't have to, I was more efficient. I've been in the right place at the right time, but he's like, but I got more confident when you're, when you're confident in something and you know, he has confidence, but when you're confident, in something, <laughs> he sure does. <laughs> right. But when you're confident in something, you could have those conversations. You never saw him riled up. Nobody ever got him riled up. You know what I mean? Like he just was always like, Hey, maybe this, this is what is it, man. Hey, come, you know, whatever it was. Cause he just knew and that's how he is now. So it's like, and once you get that confidence, I tell this to my salespeople too. Like, you know, I had a girl the other day, she's like, 
I, don't, I see a lot, not a lot of leads in like the pharmaceutical, you know, side of things or whatever. I, I really know a lot about it. And I said, she's like, is it tough? I said, well, listen, it, it is. It's, it's, you know, when it comes to insurance, when it comes to the value of the cargo, tough. the way the loading is, maybe it's temp regulated, whatever it is, it is tough. Right. Don't, don't get me wrong. But there's a lot of people that avoid it because of that. And there's some margin there. So if it's something that you want to make, you know, your niche, do that. But I always tell people, you're going to gravitate towards what you, you feel confident in. And the next thing you know, it's a lot easier to land another customer when you already know. Now you're reaching out to other pharmaceuticals. Hey, I already run for this person and this person. This is what I do. This is how I do it. That's a lot easier sell than just saying, I've got 10,000 carriers and I can save you 10. Like, fuck all that. You know what I mean? Like, you got to know, like, hey, this, I already know what I'm doing. Like, I talk to people now, I reach out very strategically. And it's like, listen, I, and they don't want to give me time of day. But my response back is like, it's talk like, to you soon. And you know what's great is I always have like a nice, nice response back, as in like, all right, well, and then I lay out like three or four things I know they're struggling with. I know they are. And be like, hey, if you ever need help, just give me a call. And 50% of the time they don't answer just because they think they're cool anyways. But hey, the other 50% are like, hey, actually, you know what? Did you say you did you're this? right? <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Because they're just think you've got to separate yourself from all these other people that are emailing Tony. And half that's my fault, Tony. I apologize. But you know what? TQL's got <laughs> to eat, eat too. TQL emails me. If anybody's watching from TQL, please remove Shaylin Dixon at Scale Logistics <laughs> off your list. I they email me and call me incessantly. Can we help you with your freight? You would be the last person I would call. I'm yeah. sorry. I just I don't understand. I really don't. I get a lot of uh, small companies too that do the same thing. They reach out to me and they're like, hey, do you have any freight I can move? I said, do you know that I'm a freight broker? <laughs> like you're a freight broker. See, I'm a freight broker. They they get so big though. I mean, I got a buddy that works out of the Indy office, Indianapolis office, and he's actually really good at what he does. But most people at TQL that are or Landstar have their customers. And that's what's what they do. And it's kind of weird stuff because there are no leads left. There are no leads. They're bringing sales people yeah. in there. They're, part of their leads is calling other brokers. And I watched it happen as we grew. I watched carrier sales reps get lazy. And all they had was they had a guy, a guy from Landstar on, on Gchat, and he was just covering their loads for them. Yeah. They didn't have to do anything. They just sent them a load, and they, and they, and they cover it, you know, and use Landstar. We had to put, like, a no Landstar thing on there. And not anything against Landstar, but because our reps need to be making their – Definitely something against like, Landstar. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, if, if, if we go through Landstar, then, if, if, if we wouldn't hire you, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, it's just – that's what it is, and it's like – you know that hey it's not it, sometimes it's not the reps fault i mean they just put asses in seats and and fill it up and that's their, that's their 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 mindset but um yeah it does get a little bit annoying For, right now it's tech and um what's the biggest oh because sales is tough it's it's just constant like t, uh, tj you know uh you know i can help you get um you know i get help you get to you know 10 visits a week you know face-to-face -face visits a week you know or, uh, i'm getting those how can i, I can, increase your sales <laughs> And I want to be like, sales? you know, some of them don't do any research and they're like, you know, I don't know how many leads you have coming in for the Northern Indiana Transportation Club, but I can really help you. And I'm like, what? I get a lot of maintenance. I can help you with your maintenance. We can keep your truck on the road. I said, can you? Yeah, you can. <laughs> You're amazing because I don't have a truck. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. So I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, there's a lot of that out there, but you know, I, I'll never really get on anybody for the grind. No. Um, I try to throw back some things that like they could work on. Like, hey, do a little research, man. Like, like. Northern Indiana Transportation Club's a non for profit. I'm president of it, but like we don't move loads. Look at what I'm actually employed in right now. Not only that, but I could probably give you some tips on sales. You know what I mean? Like it's right. like, you know, people reach out like, oh, we can we can really raise the awareness on your podcast or this and that. Like if I wanted to do that, I would have done it. Right. You know what I mean? Like if, if I wanted to do it, we'd be the biggest podcast this side of the Mississippi. But we don't want to do it. Like we, we got work to do, man. You know what I mean? And we love talking freight and having friends. And yeah, this is a fun thing on the side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can't put too much on. So it's like you know, these people like, you know, they have no idea what they're doing. They've never done it before. They don't know how to get audience. But so, you know, having that, you know, ability to have that confidence. I tell people all the time, like, send me all the responses you get when you're out prospecting. Because, like, I don't care if they say we're not adding anybody or, you know, we're, cons we're consolidating or we have a shipper da, 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 or we have our own truck. So there's always something you can come back and say that might give you a 50-50 shot at them at least responding and understanding, like, wow, this guy's different. This person's a little bit different. They're not they're not like everybody else who just ignores me or whatever it is, you know? And it's like, um, you know, if you go in and be strategic, strategic about it, it opens up a lot of doors. And when you're, but it also has to be the right time too, because the I right time you. and they have to not, not be weird about it. A lot Absolutely. of people are super, super weird. I don't ever <laughs> ask for the business until after seven to 12 times of talking to somebody. Yep. I yep. just don't like, 
first of all, I want to know like who you are. Do I even like you? Because at this point I'm betting you too. I don't know if I want to work with you every day. Like I've had customers. I'm like, I know this is not going to work. Like you're disorganized. You don't care about your job, which means I'm set up for failure. This is not a good look. So when you, some, I'm going to stay in touch with your boss and your assistant. And then when you get replaced, which always happens, I will then try to work with the next person. (laughs) But this is not going to work. I always offer that like, like how, you know, ways in which I can help them get better, like or better yeah. organized. You know what I mean? Yeah. And some take it, but some take it, don't take it very well. It's like, okay, well, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll reach out three months when you're gone. I have had people uh, criticize me for this, but um, I tell people all the time, my job is to make my boss look good. Yes. Yep. Your job as a broker is to make the shipping guy look good. Yeah, no offense fine. to anybody, but my job is to make sales look good. My job is to make my company look good to my customer. And if I partner up with you on that and your truck falls down and it's a day late, I look bad. You look bad. My company looks bad. We don't like each other anymore. And I tell, I tell my people all the time, that is exactly right. Especially when you're growing, you know, like, you know, you know, in, you know, internal sales, it's like, come up with an idea, help them, you know, get better, make, make things go better. And then tell them, you know, hey, hey, this is the idea I want to do. Like, I think this would work. Tell them to go to their boss and tell them, tell them, don't tell them it was me that did it. Tell, take the credit. Right. You, you take it. I don't, Take it in away. your mind, all I want is you give me more freight. You know what I mean? You go get all the props you can. Like, like if I could take care of this person and, you know, like, you know, I, I said, you always know when you made it, like in that, in that article, you know, start of the spot, but like, you know, you made it when they call you and say, Hey, I got three other carriers that are lower, but I'm gonna go with you because I trust you on this. You know, these people, man, they, they have no incentives. There's no bonus for them. It's, it's basically like, if their, if their boss is happy, they got job security and they go home, they can watch, you know, their, their wife's saying, hey, it's Friday, you better be home by 5.30 because we're going on our dinner date. You got Netflix show that comes on, you guys watch every Wednesday, whatever it is, like if they know that TJ's gonna take care of it, they'll pay 200 extra bucks because they can go home and not worry about it. Because they ain't got any other incentive to, you know, really push. Now, when their, you know, market's kind of down and their job's kind of, you know, maybe in jeopardy, now they're scratching and clawing for every little penny. You may lose them, like, you know, they may have been your best friend and all of a sudden they don't want to talk to you, but hey, that's how it works. You know, that's how you kind of, you know, that's how it is in life. Yeah, they always come back. That ain't personal. And they always come back, though. Let's be clear. They always, they come, always back. come back. They always come back. I, yeah. and I always come back. more when they do, but they come the back. The price has gone up, mm-hmm. buddy. You want that <laughs> safety and security. The price has gone yeah. up. You still That's got that truck? Price. Yeah, I still got that truck. Uh, I have uh, a same rate. Truck. <laughs> Hell no. I know, I know who you're talking about, <laughs> TJ. <laughs> huh? I know exactly who you're talking about, TJ. Oh yeah, you say, you know, hell no, I get, you know, I, <laughs> I got the truck and I got him right. I can call him right yeah. now. I'm telling you, it's yep. gonna be 3,800. 3,800. You told me 15. I said you should have taken it when it was 15. Yeah. Just don't ever let driver get home because once he's home, it's gonna take. I mean, I don't know how many guys I used to call like, you know, I come from the expedite world, especially you know, the automotive. Be like, hey, Bill, my man, where you? What are you doing? Ah, just cutting some wood. Hey. Man, Subaru just called. Man, they got they got a load. Come out, pick up tonight at midnight. Man, you know Georgina to kill me. Hey, what do you need? Well, what do you mean? What do I need? Now all of a sudden he's talking. Right. Tell me what you need. They just need to move, man. I, I go. What's good? Let me talk to the old lady. Call me back. She said I can't leave unless it's forty two. All right, I'll tell him forty two. Sure enough, send it over. Dude gets to take care of. But like, it's gonna take a little bit more once once you uh, don't take that first rate. That's right. Every time. Yeah, it all evens out. But I wanted to, uh, to to see. So like Jason Miller, like got me thinking. Like when he, you know, he's like the real smart guy at Michigan State. Does all the data. Mm-hmm. He's the one that kind of came up with and was talking about different industries that will not see really or haven't really seen and won't see much of a dip. If not, maybe even a raise. And the aerospace was one of them. Um, I remember him mentioning that. I thought about you immediately. So like you're like really the only one I know that like specialized in that. Um, type of thing. I, I dabble, but uh, it's definitely not a specialty. Um, so what are you seeing from, you know, that industry? I mean, that that sector and what is it that is keeping them up ahead of, now I understand retail and all that stuff because it's not as much based on consumer spending, it's more government spending, but what is it that you're seeing that that is keeping that alive and steady and will keep it that way? Yeah. So, well, of course, everybody took a little hit during the pandemic. And the aerospace market really just dipped a little bit. We didn't really feel much. Um, We restarted our business during COVID and, you know, we found success in it. But I'll tell you this, it's affected a lot by um, just the life cycle of an airplane. So 
the typical airplane can probably do about 30 years. Um, and so you're seeing a lot of the early planes, not the wide bodies, like most of the Lockheed Martin wide bodies, they're only about 24, 25 years. Boeing is probably about 27 years. So you're seeing the life cycle of a lot of, of, a lot of these planes kind of come to an end. So when that happens, one of two things happens. We have new planes being built all the time, um, but we also are seeing a lot of uh, what we call these open air storage facilities or like people in the industry call them bone yards where, yeah. you're, where they go and they park airplanes. I mean, the, the military has the largest, they probably have four or 5,000 fighter jet. I mean, they have everything out there, but we're seeing a lot of teardowns. So now because we're having an issue getting uh, parts for these planes, um, and getting them repaired in timely manners, you're seeing a lot of these other planes being decommissioned and bought and sold and then tore down. So you'll see uh, in the, in particular, like the next probably six months to a year, you'll see an uptick in volume in, in uh, aviation logistics, especially in uh, the Western states. So like Cali, Arizona, New Mexico, uh, where the air is a little drier because that keeps the parts yeah. from rusting. Yeah. So that's where we're getting a lot. So you will really, really see like an increase in the volume. Um, I think now more people are traveling too, which means there's going to be more MRO facilities <laughs> to support these AOGs or when the airplanes are on ground. Um, so there's going to be, we're going to see an uptick of MRO facilities and they're going to be focusing and using technology to kind of start predicting when these uh, component parts are going to be having malfunctions instead of the model that we've had before has always been something breaks and then they go and fix it. Now they're trying to use AI and automation to kind of be like, hey, in six months, this is going to break. Let's go ahead and while this is down right now, fix it now. Um, you're, all, you're also going to see a lot of smaller MRO facilities start popping up that offer specialized services because they're huge right now in sustainability. So they're trying to do like fuel emissions and make sure that like planes are just more uh, environmentally friendly. But what comes along with that is additional MRO facilities to handle those specific component parts, especially as they go into like electric airplanes or hybrid. Mm -hmm. um, so it's interesting to see how uh, technology is going to start changing the aviation sector, but it's on the rise. And that's why I chose it. Um, it Georgia has so many aerospace facilities, yeah. MRO facilities. And so for me, it was a no brainer. I'm like, this is where I, I yeah, have to come off the, with the, with the bases over there in Alabama, you know, coming off the ocean there. Um, I'm thinking about maybe getting my welding certification so I can, what I could do then is I feel like I could really be a big contributor in helping weld some of those old ashtrays shut. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, because we all been on that plane. Listen, you know, we're like, is that an ashtray? I never fly. So some of our customers, I don't fly with them. Okay. Right. I happen to fly <laughs> with one of our customers and I won't name who they are. I, I, I know what you're talking about. But... I, I like an aircraft mechanic got on before we were on the way to Disney and took super glue and glued the armrest and everything. I said, what else are you super gluing? I want to know. <laughs> and he laughed and got off the plane. And I said, oh, Lord. Yeah. So, um, yeah, there's been times I remember the last, no, it had been two flights ago. I sit on, uh, I, I like the window. And I'm, I'm looking, I'm, I'm right. I like getting on like where the wing is because uh, you get more leg room. Uh, especially if you're a merchant, I just got to say, yes, I will help people. Yep. Which who knows if I will or not. But um, <laughs> but I'm looking at, like, you know that that line where you look at the line, it says, do not walk <laughs> past this line. There's literally, like, like uh, boot, muddy footprints all the way down that wing o o across the, where it says, do not walk past this line. And it makes sense because it got all the flaps and everything there. I'm thinking, son of a bitch, this is the one. This yeah. is the one. So this dude over here, man, he's, he's he stepped there. where it said, don't step. He, he, he had no down. idea what was going on. He walked through. He, he broke a thing off or something, you know, like, who knows? But, like, just clear as day. But they didn't even try to clean them off. I mean, it was like, you look it out, like, you see the footprints. And no I'm fear. like, man. No fear at all. <laughs> you know that when no one was looking, he had that crescent wrench. And he was like, bam. And then it worked. And he's like, yep, fixed it. Yep, we're good. That's our 30 on. years of knowing where to hit thing. <laughs> well, I see constant growth, honestly, especially as a specialty. Um, all over, just because... Now, uh, with the increased technology and the increased availability of parts and 
just different things. I see um, more people coming into the industry, more technicians, more um, aerospace engineers that worked as engineers for these larger companies like Boeing, Lockheed Martin, um, retiring and then getting into doing their own thing. So some of these facilities are super small. I had a guy and he's like, got a warehouse in his backyard and he's like fixing plane parts. And he's like, I need you to ship this. <laughs> He's like, that's the best you can do. I'm like, yes, you want me to come to your house? You want me to send a driver to your house and you don't have a driveway. <laughs> this is the best I now, can do. Shay, Shay, <laughs> we were talking about this early in the show before you got on, TJ, but um, when I did not make it into the Naval Academy, well, I, I had actually applied to Purdue. Flat feet? Yeah, my arches fell. I actually had applied to <laughs> TJ. Purdue. TJ. Aerospace <laughs> engineering. I wanted to be an aerodynamicist. I wanted to study airflow over aircraft bodies i just thought that i mean the study of it. airflow is so cool to me i mean like I, that's why i like to watch nascar the draft you know i i like it, it has nothing to do with racing cars although what guy doesn't like racing cars right but gals like racing cars too right what, too. like everybody right, loves racing cars because cars are cool <laughs> I just like getting dressed how much up, more yeah. cool is racing planes and you know the the the, the dog fight that whole thing but it is just so cool that what you're involved in is like parts of that you're you're moving all the pieces and fixing stuff that needs to be fixed and moved but i love hearing like where you went with that because i, I always tell people like man stay up on like once you really understand that, that's the thing about having a niche i haven't having a an industry that you're kind of you can understand how it works you know because like i'm telling my people now like man a lot of success going after like you know in the automotive industry you know it's just what kind of what i grew up in but you know right now suppliers are big you know what I mean? Like it's a big thing because, you know, I don't care if you're going after interior components, rubber, you know, uh, mats, foam, plastics, whatever it is, electronics. People are, you know, that's why there's, I mean, I don't know, I, Tony, I don't know if you've been to you know, the Auburn exit up there, you know, that the old auction parks is full of trucks, all GM, right? I mean, obviously the rail's behind a little bit, whatever, but like right now people are fixing things rather than buying new. You know what I mean? The, the the time of getting that that stimulus check where you got a down payment now is gone. You know what I mean? Now it's like, all right, well, how do I fix this truck that I bought two years ago? Or how do I how do I do this? I you know, how do I get other parts? And you know, you got rock auto, you got all those other things. And I know it applies to the aerospace industry as well, but it's like, hey, instead of gonna buy a brand new Boeing plane, you know, how do we keep this one going? Um, and and then and then then all of a sudden it's like, hey, this actually does save money and it's effective. How do we use AI and how do we use tech now to stay ahead of it too and continue to do this? So, you know, it's going to fluctuate back and forth in an industry from, you know, uh, you know, finished product to suppliers to raw materials, whatever it is. Like there's always a, there's always something that's up in that industry that you can really work to, but unless you're in it and you know it, you don't see it. That's right. And I'll be honest, retail was uh, my least, uh, uh, refrigerated and retail, my least favorite areas i just it's not my my thing um they're the people that call me the most i'm gonna be honest and i'm like <laughs> no thank you um <laughs> retail is a pain honestly i yeah. do retail i mean it's great for the carriers because it's drop and hook but the insurance requirements mm -hmm. the yep. turnover rate in the warehouses the loading and unloading you don't see that with aerospace mm -hmm. my drivers are loaded in under an hour if they wait two hours it's really just because the guys are you know taking their time um you know they don't they just don't have the same challenges uh as i have with other commodities i'll be honest though aerospace and as the economy starts to get a little bit better uh real estate real estate development construction for me yep. in the southeast I, I never was interested in construction, but I have a lot of hotshot drivers, a lot of local. I work with a lot of like small mom and pop hotshot and flatbed carriers. And all the time they'll be on someone, you know, doing something else. And they'll be like, hey, John from here was like, hey, I need to, you know, hey, I've been running these loads for John and now he needs more carriers. I'm not a broker. Can you help him? Right. Like I have, he has a direct contract. So we're getting a lot of uh, construction and uh, real estate development projects, which is new for us. So we've been really focusing on that in aerospace, just keeping yeah, our- You know, you know you're doing it right when your carriers are feeding you business to keep them busy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That they awesome. literally, because they want to keep it in-house and they know yeah. I give them, 
you know, when everyone else was down and looking crazy, our carriers were getting new trucks and adding people mm -hmm. on and putting their, their uncle and their brother and, you know, and everybody understood the assignment. We all play our roles equally. Um, and it, it makes for a really great time for all of us. We're all, you know, we're all doing yeah. well. It's cool so. when you get that, when you get that. And then, you know, I, I, some of those drivers, though, drivers are drivers. There's really good ones. And then you get some of them excited because, like, drivers have always been some of the best salespeople, whether it's a broker carrier or just a, an asset guy. But, like, be like, hey, you know, when you're in there, you know, like, you know, if you're looking for another lane or you're looking for this or whatever, you don't mention it. You know, hey, hey here's this. Give this to them or whatever. You know, they're calling me, hey, I went in there and talked to John. I, I told him, I said, hey, you know, I gave him your contact info. He'll be reaching out, you know. And and then it's like, you know, two hours later, we talked to him yet? I'm like, no, but I just, yeah, I got you. Down. I got but it. But at the same time, they're excited about it. And yeah. like, they're like, they're all, they got boots on the ground, man. I'm like, a shipper saying no to a driver is a lot harder, uh, you know, especially if it's like a kind of an experienced guy than it is just some, just some random say. I mean, I told Louis Claudio that, I remember I, he was like uh, talking about some local guys. He's like, uh, I, I reached out to the guy, you know, that you gave me in, in town here and I called him and in email. He's like, don't, don't reach out to me again. I'm not, I'm not bringing anybody on. I go, Lewis, I go, dude, you have the advantage, brother. I said, I told you how to do it. Get in your fucking truck and drive over there, drive over there, Bob tail your ass over there, pull right up front to that door, leave the fucker running and walk in and shake his hand and say, I'm Lewis Claudio. I live right down the road. I run for GM, I run for uh, this, 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 and this. Said so I'm looking at you know do whatever you know I can help move trailers I got I got my truck right here uh, you know uh, all, all that stuff and like right there like that's a whole different mindset than you send out oh, an yeah. email not knowing who Louis Claudio is with with dedicated trucking you know what I mean like it's a and he and he did it and it worked yeah the guy's like all right well, what's your do you have an email and he's like oh, <laughs> I have an email and he's, and he's so he sent him this link file and priced it and all that stuff yeah it's oh, overlooked awesome. we pull up all the time at just back at hey. You work here? Who's the big boss? Who who do we need to talk to? Where do you, you know, all the time, just you would be surprised at the gas station. We live in an industrial area. So every time I'm at the store, if someone's behind me, oh, I like your boots. Where do you work? <laughs> I'm always trying to figure out who knows someone. <laughs> There's freight everywhere and leveraging yep. that, um, especially with the carriers is, is key. So. And who has the pole, right? And a lot of times it's the Tonys, right? It's the guys down there like, Tony, you know, I came up, I've been up to your both plants you've been working at. And then. I do it all the time. That's why I always try to get on site if it's close enough, you know, to get on there and talk to the guys. And and then, you know, then I go back to the guy that, that does feed the freight, the guy that's in charge to say, hey, listen, you know, I was just over here, uh, you know, so, you know, I just met with Tony, went down, we looked at this, da, 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 I saw the machine, that's pretty cool, all that stuff. Like now, like his mindset of you is a totally different, it's a totally different mindset. I mean, it's like a whole different ball game, not only for you confidence wise, but for him on the standpoint of like, oh, that's good. Nobody does that, you know? I got, uh, what was it? I saved two shipments. And really, at the end of the day, it made me a lot of money. But like, I got a call, and it was it was a local one, and they were like, "Oh my god, this person didn't drop trailers. They're supposed to drop trailers. Can you get two trailers over here?" And I'm like, "Let me see what I can do." They're like, "I don't care about rate." I go to my owner. I'm like, "Hey, he's like, we don't have any trailers available." I'm like, "Can, can you get two? His brother, his brother, <laughs> his brother. Or I'm sorry, his dad owns a company in town. And I said, sometimes we used to when we were first growing, we borrow their straps and stuff. Yeah. Sure enough, they had two trailers over there. I found two drivers to bring trailers, drop them. They all knew what was going on. And then, you know what? I was leaving work. I'm like, you know what? And they're like, oh, you know what? We're going to have to work overtime. We're just going to be pissed that we're going to have to stay over. We've been working our ass off. This is in the height of everything going real, real busy uh, a year or two ago. And I'm like, you know, hey, they're like, but you saved us, you know, but we got to stay. We got to get these loaded. We don't get these loaded at night. So I went on the way and I picked up four pizzas and a cooler pot. And I went over. I did tell her. And I showed up. And I said, hey. You know, I shook the guy's hand that had it shipping over there. And he's like, oh, man, he's like, well, these guys weren't really going to take a lunch. He's like, this is huge, you know, and I, I didn't know if it was going to be bigger. I thought maybe he'd be like, you can't do that or whatever. <laughs> right. But I figured, you know, it's already it was literally on my way home. To be honest with you. It was kind of cool. But, um, you know, little things like that, like it just gives you a whole different advantage. And so I was telling my drivers that, too, like, man, when you're on the dock and you've got if you could shake a hand of somebody who is in the trenches, the people up top listen to them, man. They do. They do. I mean, they because they know you can be a pain in the ass. You know what I mean? If, if you want to be. Right. right. It, it comes down to you whether this shit gets done, what they're telling their customers. It's up to you, to, you know. So that's a big benefit to do uh, if you can get in there with them. Those it's little win -win. things mean a lot. Yeah, but I did learn that a lot of aerospace companies, especially if they're a corporation and they're owned by another company, they can't accept anything over $25 yeah. in value. Right. 
I learned that because I had like yeah. fifty dollar gift cards, and they were like, "Whoa, this is too much, little lady." I'm like, "Okay, mm -hmm. well, let me yeah. break these down." So I, I did learn that, but I love that idea of just um, returning the favor, right? Uh, mm -hmm. it, it goes a long way. So yeah, and there's a lot of automotive does that too. You go to Detroit, which I've been up there. I swear to God, more than I. Than um, they, love, they, they, they love their Applebee's in Detroit, man. They love their Applebee's, man. Plus, you get the two for 20. It's 125 bucks. You get the two for 20. <laughs> you know, get a Brutus. Maybe take one. They love their Applebee's. I mean, it's all they're all about Applebee's. So there you go. Under 25 bucks. Well, when you come to when you come to Atlanta, that's not the case. We love Papa Do's and uh Ooh, yeah. we'll always be more than $25. I've never been to Papa Do's. <laughs> My Atlanta clients, they're they they want <laughs> Steak. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never been well, to Pop Dose, but we're up to give Shay, it a try. Tony, road trip, road trip. We yeah, gotta get some pecans trip. while we're down there too. You guys need to take a road trip Pecan. next week to Texas. That's where you. Need I know. To go. Oh, I, I should have. I should have. You guys, I, I'll be there. Oh, you know what I love is like uh, every conference I've been at. I feel like I've seen like Truck and Hustle will have like a like a, a booth. Yeah, and it's like. At first, it's like them just hanging out. I kind of felt bad, so I went over and talked to them, you know, whatever, you know. And then, then it like the last one we were at, you couldn't even what was it, the Louisville Truck Show? You couldn't yeah. even get over there. Yeah, right. I mean, we got like two the culture. Over they're there, like, blowing I'm it like, up. Oh man, they're, they're awesome. blowing it up, and it's authentic. I, I will, I'll be honest. Yeah. When I first started my first brokerage, my I'm I'm Truck and Hustle episode eighty seven. Go watch it. Right. Um, and I was a part of the first hundred, and it really helped push my business forward um because it got into a whole new audience i met i i added so many new carriers that had a similar story as me they were able yeah. to resonate with me mm -hmm. and it just they share stuff that none of us like i even still watch like people who are doing 25 million in warehousing you know it makes you just set the bar higher like okay so i'm doing this but i can they, they put the work. hustle in truck and hustle for sure i'll tell you those guys are cool they're fun to watch too i i I was telling Shay this before you got on, before we went live, I was, I was invited to go down there for in Houston. And I, 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 I turned it down because the day before I'd said yes to something else and that ended up falling through. And the people that I was going to go talk to are now at truck and hustle and I'm not. <laughs> Everybody. Yeah. Yeah, I should have we'll talked to that. Rommel. I'll, I would say, hey, look, you need some more media here and you guys can <laughs> yeah. interview they, him while you're Everybody's there. already there, man. It's awesome. I, I was there. I was their, their Scandinavian friend down at Louisville. I, what, Adam Wingfield, who I love. He's one of the smartest yeah. dudes, man. I'm telling you what. He is smart. You get a chance to hang out with him. I'm telling you. I kind of love that guy. Anyways, so I'm hanging out with him and he was going to speak on the Freight Wave stage. Grace Starkey mm -hmm. was out there whatever. And then they all came over. and sit, So I'm sitting there sitting with all of them waiting for, for Adam to go up there. It took forever for him to go up there, but I swear to God, we were the loudest group. Hilarious. Oh my God. That's what I, we do. I, my freaking, I got dental, <laughs> my, my cheeks, like I, I had to like, cause like I, they were like hurting as I was laughing so much. It was so funny. And like, but like they're, but they're smart too. It's like, I don't know. Even though half the jokes they were making were about like, what, like things that like were relevant to like what we were talking about. But um, yeah. this is a high, high energy, high positive group. And like, Sometimes those shows, man, it can get a little. Tony, remember we people watched that we set up our own booth. Did you hear about that thing? <laughs> oh my god! We found an empty booth, and we were like, we were just looking for a place to sit down and rest. Yeah, we wanted to sit right? down, and then all of a sudden, people start kind of coming up, and be like, "What do you guys do?" And I'm like, "Uh, we handle it." And so I found this like empty box, and I put a piece of paper and just wrote like in big bold letters, "Handle it" on it on the front of the booth, and people just kept walking out like, "What do you What do you guys do?" And I'm like, "Well, you know, handle it, you know." And then some people recognize this, but. Um, no, like people were walking up all the time. Everybody was looking. And then next to us, there's this young guy who was the son of like a, a mom and dad who like started a, what they start? Like some sort of fuel. Yeah. It was whatever. a supplement, a diesel but fuel supplement selling, or something. He invented this hat. What was it? Oh, this hat thing goes on the tip of your hat and it's, and it's got a horn, right? It <laughs> just goes on the bill of your hat. And there were just little things. And I said, but they were Can Canadian. You tell me he goes, no. And I go, well, that's because you're standing in the back of the booth. I said, bring him over here. So he brought him over to the booth. I sat one up there. I put it, and everybody that walked by, how many did we sell, Tony? 20? Uh, probably. We sold yeah, we to, started, the, uh, to the- this kid, had, the, this kid had just gotten out of the military like that week. So I we were just that. trying to help him out. <laughs> I told so my son, I like everybody's walking by. I'm like, listen, I know you don't have a pair of these. <laughs> and nobody has a pair of these. Let's get this done. 10 bucks, you're helping him out, veteran. You know, and he's just standing back there like, oh my God. And I'm selling like, boom, boom, right. boom. Yeah, friends. Friends. Like, what are these guys doing? I go down. I go down three booths to the uh, DOT booth, 
I get two state troopers to come down and take a picture with him to say, and then put it out on his, uh, he's got a Twitter feed or something like that. It says, uh, these horns are uh, DOT approved. And I got the approval for him to do that. Like That's and an Tony's awesome in the picture. Captain. Tony's in the picture. Oh, that was a great yeah, time. Was, I was, spent a couple hours down there just for, uh, doing nothing. But. Just taking a break. Sounds like you guys need to go to Freight Fest, honestly. Oh Let me know if you go. We'll meet up. They're doing a lot. They have a little concert. You know, I'm always here for the music. And uh, <laughs> I yeah. thought Brandon Bay is going. He's out in Houston. Yeah, I remember Brandon. I hit him up. He's, yeah. he's a large yeah. man, but he's going. up to his armpits. <sighs> yeah, literally. You he's know, I'm like five individual. foot three and a half. So I'm oh my definitely gosh. shorty. I, I'm pushing six foot, him, but... you know, with shoes on. And Brandon was huge. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Tony get out of the get out of the cab in Vegas for that, that thing. That, what was that, Tony? Uh, Blue Solutions or whatever. And yeah. he comes running across the parking lot, and I'm like, "Holy Whoa. shit!" <laughs> I, you know, I'm like, "Hey!" And, and he's like, and then he's like, "TJ," I'm like, "Oh, that's." He gives us a big old hug. Oh my god, he looks like a defensive end for the Redskins. I'm like, what? <laughs> I thought this yeah. dude was coming at me. This very large man came running he after us. Picks me up, sends me around like Cinderella. I'm like, "Oh my god!" So yeah, yeah well, you did kick your leg up in the back there, like. I felt special, Tony. Let me you were special that night. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Shay, it has been awesome having you. We went way over time because oh, you're always so interesting. Work. Yeah, this always oh, happens. Anyway. It always happens. It does. We're on our own time. Handle it. We're gonna we're gonna have to do a a, a ladies edition again. Yes. And let the women come in and take over, but you're gonna have to uh you're gonna have to help with that because I will. I have a list of the... some real some real live ladies. Awesome. When yeah. we did that the first time, it was a huge hit, and everybody everybody uh, still talks about that. And it, yeah, you got to be on that one for sure. Yeah, most certainly, I will certainly be there. Well, I appreciate you all for having me on, and uh, everyone connect with me on LinkedIn. Absolutely. And, and these yeah. two knuckleheads, those two, especially Tony, you might be broker of the week. I haven't seen you. You post your brokers of the week. Yeah, I just ran out. out. Yeah. <laughs> I just did that this week. This was the Not first one I had. I'll go back. I'll go back and look. I said, "Oh man, he must have ran out of good brokers." I did he, for he real. I went like a couple weeks. Uh, but he, he said he hasn't talked about me yet. But because we're too close, he doesn't make it seem like he's favoritism. And I don't have favoritism. Tell everybody to email him. Oh no! Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> I don't have email. That You're was going fun, straight though. to blocked. <laughs> that was fun. I I, I had it's it. Mean. I, I had it. I had to come out and literally like make an announcement that I was kidding. I thought everyone knew I was joking. I mean, I had people that like I respect in the industry connections that have been on the show and stuff going, hey, um, just so you know, like, what's the best way to reach out to Tony? I really do need some, you know, I got some drayage. People are still like, offering drayage like, help. Man, I, to I, this really, day. I was just kidding. You know what I mean? Like, it was a joke. Like, I thought I thought I made that clear. So I had to really make an announcement and be like, Did it's they been like do a any year. research on your company at all? Oh, no, no. <laughs> okay. No. No. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I no. get, I get, here's my favorite one. LCI, I get Lions Club International. Hey, uh, over there at Lions Club International, we can really help you. And I'm like, someday what? when I work there, I might take you up on that. Is that the adult superstar? I don't know. What is that? Oh, it's, Lions it Den. it's a it's a company, isn't it? Lions Club? I don't know. Yeah. You probably you probably go to the Moose and the Elks and everything, don't you, Tony? <laughs> Lions Club, that's what it is. The Moose Couldn't Lions you, you can play bingo. <laughs> All right, they do. They do uh, dancing. We're we're going nowhere with this. Oh, yeah. I still want to hear about your yeah, going I'm going to inbox you, Tony. I want to hear about the homage. great guest. I'm going to try to make pictures. it down to uh, Freight Fest, and I'll probably try to see if I can tag Tony along with me. Um, that would be awesome. You guys would have a good time. Yeah, I'm going on vacation with my wife. We'll set up a little booth in the corner. I don't have a booth either, so. <laughs> I got an idea. I want to run by you. I'll, I'll talk to you. Yeah, so only good. TJ and Shay will have our own booth. Yep. That's right. <laughs> we'll do Bring it. your hubby so we can talk to him, too. Yeah, he just yeah. got back. He's he's always somewhere. He never <laughs> stops moving. I'm like, how do you have so much energy? And I'm 13 years younger than him, so I don't I don't get it. Life of a driver, man. They don't, they're just it's constant. He doesn't stop. He's like, always trying feel to, it. He's probably outside right now, like... Cleaning Walking around the phone. Hey, yeah. Uh, he talks he's to the driver, pacing. walks around while he's cleaning off the car. Like every yeah. day, he just cleans yeah. off his truck, cleans off my car. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Bump the, load the fucking landing gear, get the airlines. Yeah. 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 He's like, I, I don't think that's what's wrong with the truck. I'm like, <laughs> hey, back of all trades. Hey, send it to my guy. Send it to my guy. That's what my, my owner always did. He's always he'll, like, send it to my guy. I got a guy out there. 
He just came in. He said, <laughs> he said, we have break fast, so you guys will have to be here. All right. Thanks, Tell him we said hi. I will. We'll talk soon, guys. Right. Thanks, Jay. Thanks, Jay. Okay. See you no guys. Worries. Talk to you later.